Um, before we dive into uh, our next talk on hour four, um, welcome to anybody who's just joining us right now. Um, again, thank you for thank you for for, for joining us. Um, let's see how long you can um, stay up and how many talks you can see. We've got lots of ways to engage in the conference. It isn't just like sitting here staring at um, hopping for hours. Um, one of our main places to engage is on our Miro board. Um, and Johannes has um, has one really interesting challenge up there already, and we'll be introducing some more. Uh, during the conference. So over over on the Miro, and this is in the um, navigation bar, um, you can introduce yourself, you can share some resources, you can share your LinkedIn, you can react to the talks and let the presenters know what you thought. Um, and <laughs> um, so Peter's doing something in the background that made me laugh. Yes, that's what Peter was doing. He's reminding me to talk about sponsors, which was very next. Um, another thing, so like all conferences, sponsors are super important. They um, they support us. They make us make it possible for us to run things, uh, and we have a really big expo area. Um, so between talks or um, as you come and go, definitely pop into the expo, learn about the the sponsors and the products. Um, you'll learn about Rosenfeld Media, who uh, uh, Peter just showed the slide of. Um, we also have um, plenty of others, and we'll talk about them a bit more um, as the as the conference goes. Um, some of them have um, some giveaways that we will um, be uh, uh, collating um, after the conference. So there's some things to do there. So plenty of um, stuff to do. Uh, and after the conference finishes, there's even more stuff to do. So the talks that you don't see will be putting on our YouTube um, uh uh, so you can catch those if you actually need to sleep. I'm going to need to sleep at some point. Um, and we also have a podcast called 24 Minutes of UX. So you can use that to stretch out the goodness um, all year round. Not that there's any lack of UX content um, in the world at the moment, but plenty of stuff. Uh, Johannes, anything you want to add before we introduce the next talk? Apart from the no, cat. there's nothing to add from my <laughs> side. I think you covered all. And... Um... Yeah, uh, I think we can uh, bring uh, our next speaker on stage. Terrific. Awesome, welcome. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, based on where you are, <laughs> or maybe good evening. Welcome, Ananya. So Ananya is from Service Design Drinks India, uh, and the talk is, is called The Ripple Effect of a Design Community. So I'm really interested in hearing what this topic's all about and what you're going to talk about. Um, this is a short talk. Again, pop your questions into Q&A as we go. Um, if there's a little bit of time at the end of it, we will do them in a session. Uh, if, um, if we don't, we will move to the Q&A session uh, and take those. And don't forget to attend our 24 hour long challenge. Make a photo of yourself uh, watching this uh, amazing talk and share it on social media. So we can see how many people are really attending this amazing session from, uh, I hope I pronounced it right, uh, Ananya? Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Good. And the I, stage I, is all I, yours. I, I took a guess as well. All right. Firstly, uh, thank you 24 Hours of UX for organizing and uh, giving us the space to uh, talk about our community. And um, thank you everyone for attending the talk. Let, let me move into the subject of it. And before that, probably a bit of introduction about myself. Hi, I am Ananya and I run Service Design Drinks India chapter. Um, I have mentored 70 plus students and entry level designers to the next career transition uh, because I myself has uh, done that journey from being into UX and then transitioning my career to service design. So I often shared, shared it among students and I learn with them as well. I'm currently working at BCG as a senior strategic designer and from my educational background, I graduated from Polytechnico de Milano. 
So like our host said, what is the topic about really? It's the ripple effect of a design community. I think it's it's a bit of my personal journey and my learnings along with the impact we are creating as a community from service design drinks. Um, it starts with the uh, individual, the community learning starts, uh, it starts with an individual and then, then it gets magnified to the community as people participate, as people start sharing the knowledge. And in the, at the by the end of the day, we um, end up uh, kind of influencing the practice area in, in, in a particular geographical region. So this is the topic all about that how it starts from one designer, it, it kind of impacts for someone's personal learning and the moment it gets shared in the community the community starts building and the uh, uh, practice starts evolving and at the end of the day we are able to um we we, we start uh creating that environment of uh, you know the learning environment for everyone all right um so Moving forward, before I get into the journey and how a community uh, helped me to shape up as a professional and why a community is important for any uh, designer, um, I would like to introduce our own community and how we are doing. Um, so uh, as you already know, it's uh, it's called Service Design Drinks India and it's not a new concept. It exists in many other uh, cities like SDD Milan, SDD Berlin, or even in, in form of SDN, like SDN New York. Um, we started this community back in 2019 when we did not have much of the um, much of service design as a practice area in India. Uh, it was it, it, from from that point of time to till now we have been supported by real leading design studios and uh, eminent um, service design personalities like Mark or even very um, fresh and new companies like Nura Health, Scriptbox, which is very much a local company. So uh, we kind of have a global approach towards. Um, a global approach towards um, uh, towards the community learning and building it up. Um, we have around 200 plus service design enthusiasts currently connected with the community across uh, across different uh, cities and regions of India. Um, the fun fact about our community is that initially we started it in a very um, quick way, but then later on, as the community started uh, developing, we had a brand guideline that was designed by an ex frog, uh, and uh, he was a very good colleague of ours. Um, so far, I know we have many, um, many participants from our own community and many, many of many of them are joining from India. So it would be really great if you say hello in the chat. Hi, Aditi. And I see many other people saying hi here. So that, that that's a great thing to see our community supporting and being present today. Uh, moving on. These are some of the uh, events we have sponsored and uh, we got sponsored and these are some of the events we have conducted. The last one was, was with Bear and it was about future of farming, understanding the business design part of um, Agritech. So it was an amazing event and there are some of the um, snaps you see from the from our community and uh, 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 how we had fun, how we had learning and how we shared a bit of snacks and drinks together. So how is our community really making an impact? We have a couple of value that we keep at our core. First is being very true to the practice. Service design is our core. And we also design our community thinking of service design. How can we do it better? Um, then we always have a community first approach. Uh, we uh, give preference to students and learning and um, uh, it's a it's a completely non-profit so whatever we are doing is uh, technically lifting the uh, designers and service design practice uh, all together and next part is the collaboration this is what we collaborate with not only just um, other ux community like 24 hours of ux but we also collaborate with startups we also collaborate and cross pollinate with other disciplines like user research or um, the product management to build this uh, build this um, thing all together 
So as you could see that in uh, HDD, we have a core team and volunteers, and then we also have a loosely, um, you know, out of sight of the, the SDD India, which is a speaker and audience. And uh, we are very tightly connected with the university and the industry for the university. We get the volunteering from them. And we also invite our, uh, some of the, sometimes we invite academic um, academics, um, people from academics to talk in our event. And um, in return, we give a industry relationship and we also share and uh, bring out the platform for our students to do the knowledge sharing. Uh, from the industry side, we uh, receive volunteering. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, support in terms of knowledge sharing because we get the speakers for most of the time. It's from the industry and we also get the sponsorship to um, hold and host the events. In return, we uh, give them um, we give them the knowledge sharing. We give them the talent pool to uh, uh, to hire from. I'm going to give more examples how this entire ecosystem has given uh, the opportunity to learn more and to fill up the gap in hiring at times. Now, before I um, get into the community part, I want to talk about why. Um, a community is important as a designer to be present in the community, to start a community or to even uh, contribute to the community as a form of speaker or maybe writing an article. Um, when I started my career as a service designer, there are very less service designers in India. I started in Milan and come, came back to in search of a job. My very first service design job was with Frog. And it was not an easy task because I joined as an interaction designer because at that point of time, there was not much of a service design project in India. And uh, the most, um, uh, most uh, obviously, I joined as an interaction designer. And from there, I, I managed to be the very first official service designer in Frog. And uh, the discipline started and later I was hired as one of the very initial hiring of a service designer in Philips and from there I moved to BCG. So in this entire journey I had a couple of learning that how do you introduce a design practice which is not so mainstream yet. First of all experimentation in tools so that it fit the current project context. How did I do it? When I was in Frog there was a lot more a lot of more projects are about the it was more about digital transformation. A lot is about UX or digital touch point. But as a service designer, you always have the toolkits to use them and modify them to fit to the current project context. So a lot of time I have seen when there are multiple stakeholder, um, uh, multiple stakeholder involved in a in a in a in a in a service we are designing or even say digital service we are designing because the delivery is most of the cases used to be through the mobile app so instead of when we when i see there's a multiple intervention in different you know one journey to another journey there are a couple of stakeholders in different layers that's when instead of using a customer journey use up i started using a service blueprint and that really gave us a lot more clarity in the projects. And this is how I slowly started bringing in service design into my UX design heavy projects. This is how I started also contributing into a lot of business development proposal. And that really helped me to build my credibility as service designer, as well as Yes, ST approaches in UX. Yes, Peter, thank you for your comment. So this is how it started. And when I built this credibility, I started also advo advocating through different articles, public, sp public speaking, etc. And finally, to be an established service designer, I, I we started the community because you yourself cannot build an entire practice or you you are not enough to really you know ride to that wave we all have to do it together and that's where the setup of the community came into the picture moving forward now what i learned in this journey that we service designers we act as like a missing puzzle piece between different other small small puzzle piece around we are that missing link who has to come in between to connect business with empathy and to do that we often have to be more than what we are 
we often have to not only just be an amazing designer, but also have to be a better colleague, also have to be someone who understands the context of business. So these are some of the things I do to fit better in a heterogeneous team or make an impact which is bigger than just the design within design, but to also make a point in front of the business and other colleagues of yours. First of all, pairing up qualitative and quantitative data together. The moment we just talk about qualitative data, often people get very skeptical about the research that we have spoken to seven to eight people and we're publishing a sort of insight. We know why it is correct, but the moment we pair up qualitative data with quantitative data, it really does wonder and helps us build more credibility. And especially, I come from a country where we design for not for 50, 100, or maybe even 1,000 users. We design for literally billions of users. So data points and understanding the segmentation and demographics becomes very, very important. I'll give you a quick example here. I was designing for... Um, insurance and as an inherent tendency i would always create a male and a female persona just to have the gender diversification but when i looked into the data i realized in india women do not purchase insurance even if they purchase it by by themselves for themselves it is all the purchase decision or the product selection is often made by the brother or the father or the husband so in that case, it is important that I looked into the data and I understand the right emotions and who is the buyer, understanding who is the buyer. So that, that was super important. If I would have just followed the gender diversity part, I would have been really wrong in that case. This is why data often give us very important insights, marry that along with qualitative uh, insights that we bring in, the beautiful behavioral insights, the psychographic insights and that can literally do wonder. So another thing I felt is that we often as a designer, design geek, even I myself get very, very lost into my beautiful methodologies of doing a customer journey, making my persona and my archetypes. But what is important for your colleagues or, or uh, you know, for maybe your, um, um, I would say project manager or is that they want to see the insight. They do not probably care about what process you are following. So I always take a pyramid approach when I am trying to, you know, I am trying to um, push some of the design methodologies into the process. I start with a powerful insight. Then I say, this is the process I followed. So going forward, if I want to derive such powerful things, if I want to derive such um, important insights, some behavioral aspects of the user, we need to follow this process. And for this, I need some time. Yes, absolutely. It's all about emotions. And I think even as a designer, when we are trying to convince other people about uh, design, it is important that we even think of them as our user and understand how to handle them. So uh, I think this is, uh, this is something. Design within design uh, is something I, I, I think it's, it's important to do that. And I try to do that as often as I can. Then uh, the last part is the the one we're stretching is that improve like a stretch actor. It's uh, important to diversify the methods and break that um, break that mindset of a customer journey is done in a certain way. A uh, um, uh, uh, um, stakeholder map looks a certain way. It's it's not important. Sometimes we need to. Uh, you know, tweak a bit around our methods on the timeline to um, do some bit of smart work and also understand the design sensitivity in our other colleagues to um, basically um, excel in our uh, excel being a service designer. So these are these were my personal learning uh, being a service designer in in India and working from some amazing firms and amazing colleagues since last um, last five six years. Um, now this is all about me now let's talk about the impact we are creating as a community first of all we are generating a practice awareness and a lot of local content people who have worked in uh, people who have worked in uh, we in in this field we know that design or user is a is something which really changes based on the country you are living in based on the culture you are living in and in india the cultural diversity is something we need to really keep in mind also the socioeconomic background 
we felt we feel it's very important to have local contents and local designers and to understand what how they are working what challenges they are facing the challenges faced by us uh, indian service designer uh, the kind of problem being tackled by indian service designer is very very different from what is being done um, what is being done in um, other uh, other countries or other regions so this is why we we do a lot of focus in doing the in doing the uh, global glo local content as well as we keep on keep on connecting with uh, a lot of um, we keep on connecting with a with a with a lot of um, global personalities like Mark or someone like Akanksha Gupta, who is uh, who is uh, who started Ivrida to actually bring some global context as well. Uh, recent, last year, we created a country specific report, and uh, this really helped the community uh, grow and. Uh, and also to understand that what is the current uh, landscape uh, in India. It helps service designers like uh, Manan to find the next colleague of his. I think um, Manan was hired by Aditi because we uh, Aditi is hiring at that point of time and we place that story. So uh, we re really help people to connect with each other. So the connecting the dots between the industry mentors and students, this is also another very important agenda we have. Uh, we have a lot of student volunteers from all the design um, um, design schools around uh, the city. And this they have been hugely benefited from the connections and were able to find internship and mentorship in, in a much more effective way. Because the moment we uh, kind of um, conduct these kind of events, the students get a chance to do a one to one interaction. And that really helps them to make an impact. And that helps them to being just a single page of CV. And you know, uh, probably when they're engaging into an amazing conversation uh, with another senior manager, we break that hierarchy, and we allow them to share I mean, it's, it's a community it's in this community space, they allow them to share their thoughts. So sometimes you might find a very um, a student is making a very amazing point about a, a certain design decision that is being shared during during the sessions we organize um so we 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 in order to uh, connect the dot and bridge the gap between hiring manager and the right talent this year we started with the initiative to recognize all the practitioner service designers in india and we have just started this initiative to connect the dots um between industry between mentors and students between the hiring manager another thing is cross pollination uh when as a as a practice, I think service design is going to evolve a bit locally, which means we will kind of take make a bowl of salad from taking different practice area and understanding what works best for our market. So coming from that point, we I think I mentioned it already, but we um, uh, we we connect with a UX researcher. We have a lot of UX designers who want to learn service design practice and uh, you know use in their project. We have product managers coming in. We have uh, co-founders and uh, entrepreneurs coming in our in our um, in our um, session. And this is how we it it it, it actually helps us cross pollinating. Um, the moment as a and in my personal growth, when I started SDD and when I connect with many people, I see such diverse amount of work that helped me to uh, start um, ideating in a much better way and I have much more context in some of the uh, practice area that might work that might not work so all together this cross pollination is shaping up the learning or or the uh, or the you know service desi design scenario in India so with that, I think um, we are very close to the time. So I'm just going to share you briefly the core team we have. Uh, that's me and Pankaj, who works as, a, uh, works at, um, as an ABP of Design in Credit Suisse. And we, I also have Juneja Niasi. She is um, someone who um, who works at Matter. And she is uh, re very recently writing a book uh, in service design. It will be published very soon. Uh, she is the very first uh, Indian service designer to write a book. Uh, so we'll also start publicizing about that very soon. And um, thank you all. If you have any 
uh, question, then please feel free to uh, write it in the chat. Uh, since we have some time, maybe we'll be able to answer. Thank you very much. We do have, oh, I was like, where did everybody go? Um, we do have one question. Oh, you were called, one, oh, we've got two questions from Peter. So um, the first was, are clients actively requesting the expanded scope of service design beyond traditional UX deliverables? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Peter asked, are clients actively requesting the expanded scope of service design beyond traditional UX deliverables? Yeah, I think if a client is actively seeking out for service design practices instead of just doing UX delivery, I think you got the best client in the world probably. So mm -hmm. your client is yourself wanting to you to look beyond the UX deliverables and look into the system. I think um, I uh, I have whenever I am um, using you um, service design into UX, first thing which I do is to understand that if a user action is happening in my digital touch point i'm assuming you you are designing it, how it is impacting the other areas what are the operations mm -hmm. you have to take what are the backstage action that needs to be supported and if uh, i can map out the backstage action is there any processed improvement i can suggest and um or maybe uh, also think there could be an a need of another UX touch point in the back end because you want to probably digitize certain develop process. So I think that's a very great case and congratulations and good luck working with that. <laughs> um, Peter also asked, uh, you know, a bit of self-promotion for you. What's your new book topic? Uh, it's not my book. It's my oh, colleague's book. book. Yeah. Sorry. And she's writing it. We would like to um, promote it very soon as long as we get the copy. <laughs> great. All right, thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. It's really interesting hearing um, your service design journey uh, uh, and, and, you know, clearly everybody's um, experiences. Um, are you going to go over to the sessions to answer any follow-up questions? To the yes, I session? Yep. Okay, great. We will, we will pop you over there.